Hey guys, this is Andrew with rockclass101.com. And in this mini lesson, Matt's going to be teaching you three ways to apply dynamics to your playing. Now, dynamics simply refers to the volume of the music. And an analogy that I like to give is kind of like what we're doing right now. Let's say we're having a conversation and it's pretty chill, pretty low key. Our voices are going to reflect that. But let's say the conversation starts to get a bit heated, we're probably not going to continue talking at this volume level. We're probably going to start talking a lot louder. And that's something that we can do with music. We can have a wide range of expression by simply altering the volume that we play at. We can go soft to loud. And that's what you're going to be working on in this etude. So in this song, we're going to apply dynamics three different ways. Let's take a look at how that works. So the first section of this tune, we have finger picking, and we want to play it soft and light. Now in the second section of the tune, we're gonna do a 180. We have strumming, chunking, and plucking. So we've got this combo that we're playing, and we're going to go loud. So we're going to play this section much, much louder than the first section. And then finally, in the third section of this tune, we have what I would say is the coolest use of dynamics. We are going to do a crescendo and a decrescendo. So literally, we're going to go up in volume and then back down. So think of this section as a volume knob. So if you're turning the volume knob on your stereo to the right, it's going to go up in volume. If you turn it back to the left, it'll go down in volume. So we're going to recreate that swell effect in our playing. And this section, it's called a vamp. A vamp literally just means that you're staying on one chord and you're doing a repetitive strum pattern. So you're going to be strumming a single chord using down and up eighth note strumming. Very, very simple, but we're keeping it simple so you can work on that crescendo, decrescendo effect. So let's do this. Let's take a listen to Evan playing the entire piece one more time, but I want you to keep in mind all three of these points. So soft playing for the finger picking, louder when you get to the second section, that strum, chunk, pluck, and then when you get to the last section, we have that swell, crescendo, decrescendo. So take a listen to that. So this etude is going to be a lot of fun from a dynamics perspective, but let's take a step back now and let's talk a little bit about this lesson. So in this video, Matt's going to be teaching you how to play the entire etude, but if you want to get the tabs to print off and follow along with, that's going to be available at this link right here, or you can go to the site rockclass101.com and do a search for ML008. That's the lesson number for this lesson. Now also on that page will be the really cool interactive on-screen tab viewer. This is a great feature where you can hit play, you can watch the tab scroll across in real time, highlight bars to loop sections, slow it down to any speed you want. Just a great asset in learning this song that much easier. All right guys, so before I hand it off to Matt to teach you how to play this, don't forget to grab the low G ukulele and I will catch you at the end of the lesson. And with that, let's go ahead and dive into this strumming and finger picking etude that really works on dynamics. Let's start with melody A with the soft finger picking style. What I like to do for this is I like to use three finger picking. So my thumb is going to alternate between my G and C strings. My index finger is going to be here on my E string and my middle finger here on my A. If you prefer to use four finger picking, you're more than welcome to. I just like the tone of three for this particular exercise. We're going to start with this A7 chord to play that. Middle finger here on the second fret of the G string, index finger here on the first fret of the C string, and ring finger here on the third fret of the E string. We're then going to pluck our G string, then our C, 
then our A, then our E. And then we're going to do the C, the G, and then the A. A little bit of syncopation here with this, which means there's this nice little accent on the offbeat. So when we're playing it, really important to get the right rhythm. And it should sound something like this when it's played in time. Again, nice and soft should be something like this. Two and three and four and. Going into the second measure, we're going to continue holding that open A string to start it. Then we're gonna pluck the E string still holding that same A7 chord. Then we're going to pluck the C string, then the G, then the A, then the E, and then the C. So it holds that chord the whole way through. Again, some nice rhythm here. In time, it should sound something like this. Two and three and four and... And measures one and two together should sound something like this two and three and four and going into measure three now measure three is actually exactly the same as measure one same chord same rhythm in time that should sound something like this two and three and four and Going into measure four, measure four starts off the same as measure two. So we're going to continue holding that open A, pluck the three on the E, the one on the C, the two on the G, and the zero on the A. All of that is exactly the same. But then to end this measure, we're going to start kind of into our melody B. Even though this is still the A melody, we're going to do a chunk, which is a down motion. So you'll notice it's written with a down. If you need extra help with chunks and haven't done that before, there's a tutorial down linked below. And then we're going to come up on this D7 chord with our middle finger here on the second fret of the G string and our ring finger here on the second fret of the E. And we want to play this a little bit louder going into that B melody part. Now, here's what measure four sounds like in time so that you can hear it. Should be like this. Two and three and four and... And then measures three and four should sound something like this together. Two and three and four and. So you see we start that sort of strumming motion there at the end of the melody A section going into this melody B section. Now, as we go into melody B, it's going to be strumming. And there's a couple things I wanted to point out here when it comes to dynamics. The first is obviously finger picking softly will help create a nice dynamic, you know, differentiation of the finger picking to the strumming. But be careful to not do too much of it because strumming and finger picking already have a natural distance in terms of dynamics between them. And it could be easy to overdo this. Now, I do encourage you to play with the bookends, you know, like how quietly can you play something versus how loud. But when you're performing it, you wanna make sure you're, you know, not quite at the edge of both of those, but kind of coming in just a bit. So when you're finger picking, be careful not to finger pick too quietly you still want to get good articulation and as you go into this melody b part with the strumming be careful not to strum too loudly because you want to be able to well have it sound good seamless if you're too too much differential it can be a little bit too much but let's go ahead and look at the b melody now we're going to be starting with that same d7 chord we did just a moment ago the two zero two zero with the middle finger here on the second fret of the g ring finger here on the second fret of the e we do want to strum this you know, pretty loud, not too loud, but pretty loud. Do our down strum. We're gonna miss coming up. We're gonna do a chunk. Then we're gonna come up on this D13. To do this, take your middle finger, slide it up two frets to the four, take the index and add it here on the three of the E. And we're gonna do an up, miss going down. Then we're gonna come up, chunk. Then we're going to come up on this other D7 to do this. Move the middle finger up to 5 on the G, ring finger on 5 of the E, and come up. So that measure 5, the start of the B melody, a little bit louder with that strumming technique, should sound something like this in time. 
two and three and four and going into measure six really important little step here you'll see that it's tied to the five zero five zero so we're going to miss with our hand going down to set it up for an up on that same chord we'll do a chunk move back down to the d13 so the middle finger slides down ring comes off index goes on three of the e string come up then we're going to do a miss then another up then we're going to do a down but there's a trick to this down and what that trick is i'm going to go down followed by a miss really quickly the reason is is i'm going to do this little double time fill to really make this sound beautiful so i'm going to go a down miss down up. now you see it's written as the opens the reason it's written open there is because we're transitioning to the next part the d9 chord so it's okay to kind of just take your hand off as you're moving for that that really quick down up fill so this makes it really difficult to show because it's all about where you're moving towards. But when you're practicing six in, on its own, you can kind of hear it sort of like this in time. Two and three and four and. You see what I did there on that second to last down on the four, zero, three, zero, I do this down, immediately miss, and then the open there for that little quick double time fill. A way that you can think of this is even though the count is going and two and and four and a is to move the hand on four going four e and a with the e of four just being missing the strings to get that nice little double time. And where it's moving from that goes on to measure seven. But before we go there, let's go ahead and hear what measures five and six should sound like in time. Should be something like this. Two and three and four and. Now, as we go on to measure seven, we're moving up the fretboard into this D9 chord. To play this, the ring finger is going to go all the way up to fret 9 of the G string, middle finger here to fret 8 of the E string, do a down strum, we're then going to chunk, and then we're going to come up with our ring finger still on the G string, middle finger comes off, index finger goes on 7 of the E string, come up there for this little D13, we're going to miss on a down strum, and then we're going to come up on that same chord. And then we're going to do a chunk and then we're going to move it down two frets to seven on the G and five on the E seven zero five zero for an up lots of movement there but in time this is my favorite measure of the of the tune also sounds something like this in time it goes two and three and four and see how we just slide that shape down then we go to measure eight, and measure eight's going to start with a miss going down. Then we're gonna come up on that same chord we were a moment ago, that D7. We're gonna do a chunk. Then we're gonna slide that down to five and three. So it's the same shape, just move down. So five with the ring on the G, three on the E with the index. We're gonna come up, miss, and then up down and then up that little open switch right so we're taking the fingers off to go into what's next and in this case what's next is actually back to the melody a back to that soft finger picking part which we'll talk about in just a moment but that should sound something like this measure eight in time it should be something like two and three and four and And measures seven and eight should sound something like this two and three and four and and from here we go back into the melody a
right? That's what's really cool about this is just the way that this arrangement goes back and forth. So that you can hear it though, I'm going to play all of melody B together and then I'm, I'm, I'm going to do the repeat. I'm gonna go back to melody A and play that through. And what I'm going to do there is have it so that you can hear how it goes from here back into the melody C, that crescendo part. So should sound something like this, starting with measure B or melody B. Two and three and four and. Here we go on to melody C. And melody C is definitely the most dynamic practice opportunity with this tune because what it is is it's straight strumming starting at a mezzo forte, crescendoing into a forte or a double forte, and then from there coming back down a bit. And so when we're working on this, we're just going to be playing an A chord, a really simple chord, 2100. Zero, zero. And we're going to be taking our index finger and we're going to be doing straight down up strums for measure nine. So it goes one and two and three and four and. And by that halfway point, we should be, you know, quite a bit louder than where we started. So think about it as your first down strum being a certain volume and your last up strum being a louder volume and try to work on getting comfortable getting to that volume from the first one. That's how I practice dynamics, is I don't think about just getting louder, I think about where I'm going to end, and then practice going from where I'm starting to where I'm ending, and gradually increasing the volume as I go. So one and two and three and four and. And we wanna to continue to get louder here as we go into measure 10, and we're going to continue with that down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up. And it's still that one and two and three and four and, uh, but on the and of four, we're going to do a little double time for that and a. So we actually approach this the exact same way we did measure six. If you remember, we did that sort of down, miss, down, up. We're going to do the same thing here on measure 10. So we can think of the count on 10 with our hand as this sort of one and two and three and four e and a, where we're playing on the and a. Kind of tricky. Should sound something like this though. Here's measures nine and 10 in time. Should be something like this. Two and three and four and. Going into measure 11, we're going to still be on this chord. We're gonna play that as sort of the loudest one of those down strums. And then we're going to follow that up with an up, down, up, down, up, down, up, getting softer as we go. So measure 11 is just getting quieter. First strum nice and loud, quieter from then. Should sound something like this in time. Two and three and four and. Going into measure 12 now, we're gonna continue getting quieter and add a retard, which is going to make us go slower as well. And so that one is just down, up, down, up, down. Going a little slower as we go through. So measure 12 in time should sound something like this. Two and three and four and. Ending with that nice soft sound. And in time measures 11 and 12 should sound something like this. Two and three and four and. And so that we can hear it, here is all of Melody C with the crescendo into the day crescendo. It should sound something like this. Two and three and four and. And that's really the opportunity to be working on those dynamics with strumming. 
So there you have it. There is the finger picking and strumming dynamics etude. Remember, when you're doing the finger picking, you definitely want to be softer. When you're doing the strumming, you want to be a little bit harder. But you don't have to pluck super, super, super soft with the finger picking because finger picking is naturally a quieter technique. While you don't have to strum really, really hard and loud with the strumming because strumming is a naturally louder technique. When you're practicing this, you want to find those really nice dynamic ranges and you don't necessarily want to be sitting at the bookends the whole time. So I find it really helpful to try to play as soft as you can and then come off a little bit, just a little bit louder that. Strum as loud as you can and come off. Don't quite go as loud as you can, but that nice dynamic range will be present as long as you're sort of working towards this. As always, if you have any questions, feel free to leave them down in the comments below. I look forward to seeing you guys next time on the next lesson here on Rock Class 101. Thank you so much. All right guys, so this mini lesson was a lot of fun. Working on dynamics is always enjoyable. And in fact, if you wanna go a step further and really dive deeper into dynamics, I'd encourage you to check out our classical technique and style course, because it has a lesson that is free on dynamics, and it really, really goes way more in depth into how dynamics work. So if you wanna check that out, you can do so by clicking this link. I'll also link it in the description box below. But let's talk a little bit about the A2 that we just learned. So if you do want to get the tabs to print off, keep for your records, that was available at this link right here. Or you can go to the site rockclass101.com, do a search for ML008. That was the lesson number for this lesson. Don't forget on that page was the really cool interactive on-screen tab viewer. So you can literally hit play, watch the tab scroll across in real time, highlight bars, loop sections, slow down, all that fun jazz. So guys, I hope you enjoyed this lesson and we will catch you in the next one. Take care.